Welcome to my operations management video on the master schedule. My students can access the video tutorials for these problems using the content menu in D2L. YouTube viewers can access the video tutorials on my MOOC on Udemy.com. I have a long and short version of the URL posted on the screen and I will post this URL in the description. We saw in a prior video how to develop the aggregate plan. That's basically a 5,000 level view of production. You can't schedule people, machines, and material based on that view. We have to break it down into much more detail. That process is called disaggregation. Once you disaggregate the aggregate plan, you end up with the master schedule. Production must break down the aggregate plan into specific product requirements for every single product that they're going to produce. They then use this to schedule labor, material, machinery, production, and so on. The first step is to decompose groups of products into individual products. So your aggregate plan might have a plan for lawn mowers. You break that down into push mowers, self-propelled mowers, and riding mowers. We usually accomplish this using historical averages. So, for example, if 5% of our historical sales have been push mowers, whatever we plan to produce in terms of mowers, we'd schedule 5% of those as push mowers. The master schedule is the result of disaggregating an aggregate plan. It shows quantity and timing of specific end items for a scheduled horizon. So basically it tells you how much of every single item you're going to produce period by period. Typically, this is scheduled weekly, so it tells you weekly what you're going to produce of each item. Rough cut capacity planning is the process of approximately balancing the capacity and demand to test feasibility of a master schedule. We're going to do a lot of planning based on the master schedule. That would be counterproductive if the master schedule wasn't doable for some reason. So we perform some preliminary tests to make sure that we have an adequate capacity to support the master schedule. That's rough cut capacity planning. As I said, the master schedule tells us period by period how much of each item we're going to make. This is not the same as the forecast for a lot of reasons. One, typically the forecast isn't that granular. Two, the forecast is demand, not production. We could be doing level production, for example, and not producing to the forecast. The master schedule interfaces with marketing, capacity planning, production planning, and distribution planning, all of them looking at it for different reasons. For marketing, it tells them what they have available to sell. For capacity planning, it tells them if they're getting close to needing to add capacity. For production planning, it tells them what to produce. For distribution planning, it gives them an idea of what they're going to need to move around to ship to customers or to warehouses and the like. It's not an exact amount for distribution planning because they also may be moving inventory. The master planning process is complex and it is too complex to be handled just by a computer. So typically the planning is overseen by someone called a master scheduler. This is part of the executive team at a factory. The master scheduler has a lot of responsibilities. They evaluate the impact of new orders. When an order comes in, how does it change the master schedule? They provide delivery dates for new orders, basically it's telling marketing how quickly they can produce the item and they deal with any problems. A machine breaks down, so production is delayed. Something changes the master schedule. We find out we don't have enough capacity. We find out we can't get certain materials. We have labor problems. The inputs to the master scheduling process are the beginning inventory, the forecast and are the aggregate plan, and customer orders. These customer orders are sometimes called firm planned orders. The outputs are going to be the projected inventory, basically is inventory going up or going down, the master production schedule, the period by period production plan for each item, and any uncommitted inventory. That is inventory we're producing that is not linked to a firm planned order. When we have a tentative master schedule, it is approved by rough cut capacity planning. Basically, this is our first pass to make sure that we have adequate capacity. Rough cut capacity planning only looks at critical resources, the ones we're most likely to run out of. That's why it's called rough cut capacity planning. If there's not enough capacity, then we either have to come up with a new master schedule or we have to figure out how to get more capacity. Since we're still at the rough cut phase, rough cut capacity planning must look at all the production lines at the same time. Once we finally get to the point that we've got an approved master schedule, that becomes the basis for short range planning. The master schedule is broken down by time fences. These are points in time that separate phases of a master schedule planning horizon. They help planners decide on possible changes to the master schedule. The time fences usually divide the future into three broad areas. 
frozen, slushy, and liquid. Where frozen comes first, and liquid is further out into the future. Frozen means the master schedule is locked in place. We can't change it without a senior executive approving it because there's going to be so much expediting and pain from changing the schedule. We just don't have the time. Slushy means there's going to be a little bit of difficulty changing the schedule, but it's not too bad, and the master scheduler can typically approve changes. Liquid is further out into the future. There's time to change anything, so anyone that needs to make changes to it that has the authority to make changes to it can make those changes. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing to this channel.